All right, guys, I am back and we are going to make this cute little thing. Um, it's inspired by several people. Um, one of Gail's latest um, journals that she's working on had these really cute flips and I thought it would be really cute um, to kind of add to one of these. Um, so it's got two flappy pockets and um, I've just got some like crazy collage tags in there. And this particular one has um, like ephemera pieces from um, uh, 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 um, dreams, etc. And then also um, it's got a few of uh, Susan Taylor Brown's new Santa kit. And so here's this piece here. This little tag here. And then ugh, kind of fiddly thumbs today because it's not cold cold per se but the wind is blowing and that stuff just always tears me up um, I don't do wind well okay and so then in here there's a pocket and I honestly can't remember what kit I got this out of um oh yes I do this was off of um Lorna Taylor's um one of her Christmas packs I believe I think I'll know here in just a second because, um, yeah, it's off of Lorna Taylor's and then I just backed it on some cardstock. Um, and so, and then here's some tags here. Those Santas both came out of, um, Susan Taylor Brown's new Chris, uh, uh, Santa ephemera kit. Okay. And then up here we have this cute little mini journal and it's the envelope journals and it's just got, um, I guess I forgot to glue that, huh? I thought I had already glued it. So we'll just glue it now. How about that? All right. So, well, there's that. <laughs> um, so it's just very simple. Um, I have done it it's very similar to the um, little Halloween journal we made. And um, there's a journal card in here. And then, then in here is just a little pocket here with some little ephemera here and a tag up here. And then the little tag here, card I guess, and a tag up here. And so then the inside has pretty much been left. Oh, and then there's a little journaling card that slides out here. maybe right here okay so then um yeah it's just pretty simple and then there's 10 pages in here um and they are all left blank for the journaler to do like what they will they will with it but then they can always add a pocket or they can um um just write on these tags or or whatever whichever and so these are um just little gifts that I think will be really cute to either a um, give as gifts, obviously, or like um, keep in your car in case like you run into somebody, which always happens to me during the holiday season. Um, and this bow isn't going to be great because, like I said, my fingers are kind of stiff today with the wind. Um, anyways, what was I? Where was I going with that? Oh yeah, I always I always run into somebody at Christmas time that I would have loved to have given a gift, but then, you know, I'm always, I don't have one, right? Like, <laughs> so I, the la last year and this year, I like to keep, or not last year, but not this year, obviously, because it hasn't happened yet. Um, but last year I kept a couple of these little things in there. So then I just had a small little gift I could give them. Um, I was like, oh, hey, I got something for you. You know, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, let's get started. And I'm going to tell you, that I'm gonna be using, um, oh, actually, hold on, I got I gotta go do something really quick. I'll be right back. Okay, what I forgot is I needed to make a little sign. So um, I just wanted to remind you guys that 20% off on um, things in um, uh, Poppiness, AKA Susan Taylor Brown's shop um, through the end of the year, but the code for that one is Christmas with Didi. 
Okay. And then also Amy has kindly offered uh, my subscribers and I'm pretty sure I misspelled November because I just did it really quick. And I don't know. Um, if it's not June or July, <laughs> then I misspell the whole, the whole month. Uh, yeah, a little, a little, uh, challenged in that, um, area, but November 16th through the 26th, um, um, Amy is offering 15% off of the digital kits code DD15. Okay. So I will put those down in the description box along with their links as well. So thank you ladies for doing that for me. And so these projects that are coming up, I just wanted to show you cause I've showed you, um, uh, Susan's kits and I'll show you some of the ones that I'm using, um, of Amy's and then some of the ones I'm using with Lorna. Um, and then of course there'll be the dreams, etc., and then probably a little bit of Artie Mays throughout the month. But as soon as I introduce one, um, I'll try and remember to tell you which kits I got them out of. So I'm going to be using some of the papers and I haven't printed them all of Amy's, um, winter kit, her new one. So we're going to be using some of those for these little journals. Okay. And I believe that this one is, is it 18 page kit maybe? So yeah, we're just going to be using some of those. And then um, I'm going to be using um, some of the pages out of her Woodland Santa, which is also new this year. Um, I just think these are just adorable little things and it'll blend well with everything else that we're doing. So again, I haven't printed all of these. Um, this kit does come with um, some wood. <clears throat> sorry, wood backgrounds. Those are pretty nice too, but they don't really fit the projects that I'm doing right this second. So, but I do think I'll end up doing a journal out of those. So yeah, it's a very, very nice kit. Oh, and then um, uh, um, Amy also has another new kit and I have it printed. I just didn't bring it back because that'll be for ephemera later, um, probably next week. Um, and it's got all kinds of uh, the more popular backgrounds that she has and they are ready for the, I think she calls them A11 envelopes. So we're going to play a little bit with those um, too, probably next week. <clears throat> all right. And so then um, the kits of Lorna's I'm going to primarily be using is um, her German ephemera, Christmas ephemera. And then I'm going to be using, and I've already used some of it, so I can't show you the full pages yet. Uh, or again, I mean, I'll probably print them again, but um, her Christmas wrapping paper. Um, I've printed a couple of sheets of that. So I'll be using some of that. And then I've also printed um, some of um, Lorna Taylor's um, uh, Christmas music kit. Um, it's an interesting kit. It has all kinds of different sizes of music. And I was hoping to, like it's in, um, oh, maybe, what did I do with that other sheet of paper? All right, so anyways, um, some of them come like in five by seven size and then some are like um, ATC size, so very cool. So we'll be playing with those. Um, so yeah, let's get kind of started and we'll at least make the basics today. And then um, we'll see how far we get. And then we will, um, oh, and I made a bunch. I need to make more. Um, I made a bunch of just like random size cards and tags out of my scraps. And I still am choking on scraps. And I still have these. I made 19 sheets of these guys. That's how many, <laughs> that's how many your girls got of scraps. And like I said, my bag is still full of little scraps. So yeah, I'm going to be gluing for a long, long time. Okay, so this is what we're making. So I'm going to have to bring my cutter over. And it's big. So yeah, we're just going to have to kind of fake it till we make it here. Okay, so um, you're going to need this file folder. And when I give you these measurements, it's the folder is folded in half. Okay, so leave it folded in half. Um, we need seven inches wide but and keep this for a second and then we need seven and a half and seven and a half in inches tall okay okay and then just set these aside really quick that was seven and a half 
Yeah, okay. And then this piece, you're gonna need, oh, no, right, okay, so, and then one more piece, and we're gonna take it three inches. Okay, and then, then um, I'm assuming you guys are gonna have these flaps right here, and this is where it's gonna vary just a little bit with what you have. Normally, I've been cutting them at four and a, or I'm sorry, eight and a quarter, okay? And I hope that this is even in, in film for you. And you just want a straight edge, okay? Okay, then we're done with the cutter for a minute. So then with this piece here, you're just going to take that original fold or fold line, kind of get it good, and then you're just going to tear it apart like so, okay? And then I've been freehanding it. And sorry, you guys are probably going, boy, that shirt of hers is really ratty. And you would be right, but it has special meaning that I'll tell you about in just a minute. Okay, so then I just take the folder score line on that piece like that and just score that top line to give myself a flap there. And then I just take this piece and bring it almost to that first crease there. And then I just kind of line it up and I just crease it down, take my bone folder and voila, we have that. Okay, on this piece, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of eyeball it up. Uh, mine end up us usually being in between three quarters of an inch and an inch. Okay, like so. And then again, I take this and bring it up like that, almost meeting that edge, but not quite, okay? okay and then I just crease that down like so. Okay, and then I'm gonna set these aside for a second. And then you're gonna need your scoreboard or however you usually score. And then we're gonna score at half an inch on each side. So it would be scored at six and a half. Boy, that's pretty dirty and ugly looking, huh? And since I'm doing double thickness, I usually go just a little bit firmer on the pressure. So yeah, I'll finish giving you instructions here and then I'll explain about my shirt. Okay, so then I open it up and I know Mountains Valley is all that jazz, but um, it's not really a great way to do 14 or technically 15 inches of, of scoring on there. So... We just fake it till we make it, right? So put in your score lines to the center. Yep. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is take right, right about, you want this part, your rivet part, or um, your previously scored part, you wanna put that one to the front of your project, okay? So I'm gonna just take that first little score line, kind of miter in, and then I'm gonna take this part up. All this light, I apologize, it's kind of hard for me to see score marks. So make it as straight as you possibly can. If you're really good at, and have one of those slider cutters, that would probably work even better. <coughs> So again, I'm just gonna miter in that score, score mark and take, take it up. I'm totally missing that score mark, I think. Okay, then what I do is I miter the top of this just to the corners. Of fold it back in again, miter them down just a little bit again, make sure they're good and crisp, and then we just fold it up. And I just before I glue, I just kind of make sure it looks all right, okay? Pretty good. 
and I, oh, I cleaned my glue, so we should, shouldn't be having too many issues. I say that and then, you know, I'll leave it off again and then, you know, it goes from bad to worse, right? We're just going to glue this here. Oh, no, we're not. All right, so I'm going to wipe this off really quick because it'll get all dry and weird. Okay, sorry guys. Got a little out of my, uh, out of my thing. Okay, set this one aside for a second. Bring back in your, your, um, pockets we just did and take and glue the bottom. And then this little side here, because we're going to glue it in there and make a pocket, okay? Like so. Okay, go ahead and do the other one. And it doesn't look like it's a glue straight kind of day. And then if you're going to ink, now would be the time to ink these. Okay, now we pull this back in and we're going to kind of place these and we can use this back side to kind of gauge how it's going to sit on the page. So I'm going to take one side of your flap and glue it down to the back. Make sure you get a lot of that corner, right? The corners of your paper. Even if you bleed over a little bit, it'll be okay as long as we let it dry before we put the front on, okay? Because you don't want anything catching up on those when you when you go to close it, okay? Okay, now we're going to take this one and we're going to kind of just come for that right now. It's okay, okay? Gonna kind of just bring that up. We know we want it somewhere right around here. We're just gonna throw our glue back on. Again, make sure you're going to the edges because like I said, the glue, if you have a little seepage out, is as long as you clean it up, not to worry, it'll be fine. Okay. Because what you don't want to have happen is when you go to stick stuff in your pocket, you don't want it catching up on those corners, okay? Which I'm going to go ahead and get that one down just a little bit more. Okay, now, now we want to take this up, glue that, and really make sure when you're at the top of your pocket, make sure you hit these corners up here quite a bit so that it gives it an even amount of of glueish loveliness so it really sticks down into those corners okay so then this pops over in this direction and this pops over on this one and voila you have this. Okay, so now let's decorate this. And I think in the next few ones, I think we'll move those out a little bit or maybe move the score mark out just a little so that it lays just a little bit flatter. In the end, it won't matter because the journal's going to pop it up. Uh-oh. Ha, <laughs> ha, I glued my pockets. One of them upside down. Check that out. How funny are we? Or me, anyways. All right, so do a little fix here, just like this. 
take my letter opener down, open that pocket back up at the top. Okay. And I'm going to throw a little bit of glue on this one here to close up this end instead. So you don't freak out when you're making stuff. I mean, it happens and there's always usually a quick fix if you just don't get overly worked up about it. All right, now while I decide which paper we're going to do these in, I'll tell you about my shirt. Um, this shirt was my grandfather's shirt and he died um, back in 93. And um, it was like one of the things I got from my grandma that was his. And so um, I've obviously, it's getting threadbare, <laughs> but I'm not going to throw it out. Um, once upon a time I had a red one, um, but I have since through all the moves that we've done, it has come up missing. Um, I have no idea where it actually ended up. So, which makes me really sad, um, cause it's probably in near new condition still. So, but that said, um, anytime that I just feel like I need a hug, um, yeah, I just pull out my grandpa's shirt and he gives me a hug. Uh, my grandfather and I were really close. Um, our birthdays were exactly one day and 50 years apart. I was born on the 29th and he was born on the 30th. And so up until I got into my teen years, um, we celebrated our birthdays pretty much together. Um, obviously there was a few years we didn't, but, and then the older I got, the more he felt like I should just have my own birthday, which, eh, I didn't really want that, but he just thought that I should. So, so he kind of, we kind of stopped doing like cakes together and whatnot. So anyhow, yeah, he was a great man. <clears throat> he was like everybody. He had his issues, but man, he loved his family. There was never any doubt and never any question. I don't think in anybody's mind whether he loved you or not. And as many of you guys know, um, my sister is um, handicapped. Um, she has something called P1 deletion. But growing up, um, they had labeled her with cerebral palsy and autism, um, which what she has does closely mirror those. Um, and it wasn't until we had her genetically tested um, in the mid 2000s. Honestly, I can't remember what year it was. Um, that's when they discovered that she had this thing called P1 deletion. Um, but my grandpa was besotted by my sister, um, and he had a very unique take on handicapped children and the beauty that they brought into the world. Um, he believed that, um, cause my sister w still does to this day, gets quiet and she stares off into the distance. And, um, he used to always say it was because the angels were talking to her, which, um, out of all the things I've seen in my life, I think his take on it is probably pretty right. And that's not overly straight, but we're not going to worry too. We're not going to fuss too much about it. Um, I think he was probably right. You know, um, my sister's a very, very, very sweet, sweet soul, um, who is doing well. Um, she, she has an interesting story too. Um, she and my mom can probably comment in the, in the comments below, um, if I'm wrong, but I believe she started having her first set of seizures when she was about six weeks old. Um, yeah, she, and during the birthing process, you know, granted it was the seventies, so there wasn't a ton of technology and my mom, my sister sat in the birth canal, um, like way too long without oxygen. So that didn't get her, her life started out completely right. Oh, sorry. If I didn't say it ago, a minute ago, we are just like covering these things. Okay. We are just adding some beauty to it. So yeah, like I said, my sister was just an interesting, interesting soul or my grandpa, I should say. <laughs> grandpa was an interesting soul and Crystal is, is equally as fascinating. Um, she's in what we call now a, a host home. 
and her caregiver is amazing. She is like, my sister has made like leaps and bounds progress um, in the world. Um, and it's, it's largely due, I, I believe to her, like she, she loves my sister. Like there's no doubt in my mind. And it's been such a blessing to have her have Crystal. Um, cause Crystal gets that one-on-one -on -one attention that she couldn't, that she couldn't get like when we were little, little, right? Because mom had two babies she was looking after. And then as we got older and she was in group homes, obviously it's the group homes for handicapped kids are just as appalling as they are for foster children. Sometimes like, I'm not saying every don't, oh, that sounded mean. I don't mean every foster home is appalling, but I mean the system, not, not the homes, the system. Um, just like the jostling back and forth and, you know, being, I don't know. Sometimes I think they move these kids so often that they're purposely keeping them hopping. You know what I mean? I don't know. I can't say too much on the foster system because I, I, my experience is only like limited. Um, um, I don't know it all. And I don't, I will never say that I do because I'm sure it has its own, its own challenges and whatnot. I can speak of the group home because I've watched my sister. Uh, my sister has been beaten by other residents. She has been mistreated by staff. She has been ignored. I mean, it's, it's terrible. That whole system needs a revamp. Um, and I think, I think our foster care system needs a revamp too, because, um, like I said, I know, I know foster parents that are like in it to win it, right? They, they care deeply about their kids, but then, you know, there's others that only do it to make money, which is incredibly sad because the children get lost. I just wish that there was more, there was more we could all do for those children and the system. It's a deeply flawed one. Anyways, so yeah, this host home, my sister has accelerated being with her host home lady, partner, whatever they call it. I'm not sure. Okay, so sorry, that was a little bit ranty, wasn't it? <laughs> I didn't intend it to be ranty. Um, What do we put on those pockets? Should we just like use up this piece of paper I've already got? Um, yeah, cause I meet, I'm making a ton of these little guys, so we could totally do that. Anyways, so yeah, um, that was a long winded story, but yeah, so. So yeah, um, yeah, my, like I said, my grandpa had an interesting take on life. And, um, he never ceased to amaze people with his, his kindness. Like he, he too was just a gentle soul. And he died actually very, very young. And back then, like they were just finding out about, oh, that's way too small. Okay. They were just really kind of doing research on like, um, pancreatic cancer and so I know a lot of cases now it's still fatal. Um, and his obviously was, um, and they didn't really call it pancreatic cancer back then. I forgot what they said it was, but basically that's what it was. Um, and I don't know if my grandparents just said that he had issues with his pancreas so that us grandkids didn't like worry. Like, you know, cause even, even back in the nineties, obviously cancer was still a really scary word and it, it still is, but, um, you know, the doctor, when he had his first pancreatic attack, um, he nearly died. He's, I think he spent like f some crazy amount, like 40 days in the hospital. Um, so maybe it was 30. I can't remember. That was a, that was a long time ago, but it was a long time. And so, um, he had gone misdiagnosed for a long, long time. And, um, even his primary care doctor was like, yep, I missed it. Cause he had kept having pains and whatnot. And so, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I haven't done much research on the pancreatic cancer bit, but it's not, it's not pretty. 
he did manage after his pancreatic can uh, attack, his first one, to, um, oh, I know what they said. They said he had spots on his pancreas, which, I mean, now we know spots really means cancer, right? Um, and so I don't know, like I said, I don't know if that was said spots as in so it didn't freak out the grandkids with the cancer word. I don't know. I guess I never thought to ask. <laughs> I think I just, um, the older I get, obviously I know what that, what that is now. So anyways, he managed to live another two years, um, which, you know, was a beautiful thing. Um, you know, I, I know that he probably lived in pain, but yeah, he did finally pass away at home in peace. His last few days on earth were beautiful. And, um, it was, it was a surprise, right? Like, I mean, I think we all kind of knew he was living on borrowed time. Um, but at 16, almost 17, you know, I didn't realize that the last time we would ever talk would be Father's Day, which, and then he died July 5th. So you never really know that it's the last time you talk to somebody, which, you know, you always have regrets about not going and seeing them. Um, cause 4th of July weekend, I was supposed to stop in and say hi, but you know, in, in a way I'm kind of glad I didn't because the timeline of when he died and the timeline of when I was supposed to stop in and see him would have been pretty close so it would have been cutting it close but then you always wonder well if I had stopped in would it have changed anything would I have woken him up and you know but I mean it is what it is right when it's your time it's your time right I believe that anyways I believe we all have a rhyme and a reason for being where we are when we're when we're there. Anyways, so yeah, I know you guys, most of you really enjoy me sharing like anecdotes and whatnot. Oh, the latest anecdote is that they've now canceled school basically in our area. All the schools. Originally, it was just um, two of them that had uh had um students sick but now it is everybody so this is actually kind of a fun little project um you could absolutely use your scraps that we have been building out of the um three and fifteen Um, you could absolutely do that. So I think today we'll just get to the pocket, like we'll get this part done and then we'll get to the pocket here. And then I think I'll call that a video and then, um, we'll run through, uh, how to make those little journals again. I'm going to make these are slightly different than the last ones, which is okay. Okay, now we gotta decide what we're gonna use for the pocket. Do we just keep using like the piece that I had last time? And just move the pocket up a little bit. Yeah, maybe we'll just go ahead and put that there. Okay, I've, I've gotta remeasure this pocket because I don't remember what it was then. I need inches, not centimeters. My brain doesn't work that way. So I made it five and a half by four so let's make sure five and a half by four will fit here yep it'll fit so then what I'm going to do is just take some of this extra scraps that I have over here of cardstock hopefully that one's not quite that but does it matter I don't think it matters because I think I would rather use up scraps than I would have a ton of extra cut pieces okay 
So then I'm going to take this and I want this one here. So I'm going to take my Fab Britannic. Right? No, you know what? That glue works pretty good on these. So I think that's what I'll do. Just make sure that won't matter. Oh, and the kittens are in here playing. I'm gonna flip it over and I can see where I've already kind of, there it is. So I'm just gonna lay it down there. I swear I'd had too much coffee or something this morning and I don't even drop, drink coffee. <laughs> I mean, I do drink caffeine. I drink um, a tea that I just love. It's good stuff. Okay, looks cute, looks cute. Oh, she's such a naughty little thing. Get out of there. Faith, get out of there. My cat, since since the kitten is so active, my, ki my cat, which she's like a year and a half old, has decided to enact her crazy her crazy calico jeans and so she's being just as crazy as the kitten <laughs> like all right guys you got to give me a break so i have a full-grown cat being a kitten and a kitten being a kitten oh man they do drive me crazy sometimes but they're super cute so all right guys i'm gonna include um call that good for this video i have no idea how long it is um and then when we come back we'll make the journal and then we'll decorate this and throw in our tags and then um, put our ribbon on and call it a cute little Christmas gift. All right, guys. See you soon. Bye.